They had pockets? Yeah. They had pockets. <laughs> Did you not have any pockets? No, I had no pockets. <laughs> <laughs>Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Wellington, New Zealand, with the cast and creative of What We Do in the Shadows. So without further ado, let's sit down to a big plate of baschetti and bring them out. Our first guest is a makeup effects artist whose body, whose body of work includes Mad Max Fury Road, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, and the Hobbit Trilogy. Today he joins us as a special effects makeup and prosthetic designer for what we do in the shadows. Please welcome Don Brooker. Hello, good morning. Hello. Oh, it's, it's morning. It's morning in your side of the world. It's morning. It's Halloween. <laughs> it's Halloween uh, morning. It's uh, it's still Halloween Eve for us over here in the evening. So, uh, well, Don, thank you for joining us. How how are things in your corner of the world? Good. Thanks for having me, Patty. Uh, great. Uh, sun's out uh decorations are up um fantastic right on right on okay so you've i've got got incredible hulk head behind you uh you've got uh, one of our favorite uh, vampires behind you what's the tentacle to the creature uh, next to that on your on your shelf there uh you've got uh that's from wellington paranormal so that's a little maquette okay. that i did for um the alien plants for the oh. first episode all right, very nice, very nice. We'll uh, definitely go into more of your body work, and let me just say that yes, you've done you've done some work in some fantastic uh, films and television series that I've really adored, and thank you for your body of work. Um, and I hope to get a little more of the details. But let's bring out the rest of the boys and talk about this amazing collaboration that you've all done. Our next guest is an actor whose credits include Thirty Days of Night, The Shannara Chronicles, and Ash versus the Evil Dead. Today he joins us to discuss the role of the 8,000 year old vampire Peter. Please welcome Benjamin Friendship. Ah! Hello, good morning, or hello, good evening. It's wh wherever, you, wherever your part of the world is. Go ahead and go by that. <laughs> same, as, ben, same as Dom. <laughs> yeah. Ben, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm hoping everyone else is very well too. Hi, Dom, uh, how are you? Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben is also down the road from me. Oh, literally? Yeah, literally just down the road. <laughs> Around the corner. Oh, oh nice, nice. So uh he said he's got his uh, Halloween decorations up. Uh you got it uh, anything decked out outside? Uh no, but I've got uh, bits and pieces of paraphernalia from other things on my shelf as well. Uh some of which or all of which I think um Don has worked on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Don worked on Akira? No way. Oh, yeah. oh you spotted that. Oh, yeah. I'm a geek of many screens. That's Ash vs. Evil Dead up that way. Yeah, yeah, and, I've got that uh, figure. That's Shannara Chronicles over there. Yeah. The, the monster mask guy had got a souvenir as. Don didn't work on that one, though. Alas, but uh, friends of his did. So, um, yeah. There you go. Well, Peter up there. Illustrated by a fan. Nice, very nice, very nice. Well, let's get let's bring out uh, the rest of this triumvirate and get this uh, this story going. He is an actor whose roles include Mega Time Squad, Mystic, and Educators. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of the 183 year old baby of the flatmates, Deacon. Please welcome Johnny Bra. Good good morning, good evening to you. Indeed. Um, can I just can I just point out? That the film was made a few years back, so he's not he's no longer 183. That's true. <laughs> he's almost 190. That is that is true. That is true. I I I I humbly I humbly stand corrected. It, it's an easy mistake to make. <laughs> Soon he'll be 200. He'll probably have a birthday. Oh yeah, the big the big the big <laughs> bicentennial. That'll be yeah. Uh, that that's got that's got to be worthy of a, a short film at least. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, I have nothing of my. I, I do have a little picture here. This little picture here mm -hmm. is um, of my comic duo Sugar and Spice from many years ago, from the nineties. Other than that, I only have these um, scenes and some. That's my work. I stick them on the wall so I can see them, so I can walk away from them, basically. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, let's hope no. Let's hope no plagiarists are zooming in really hard, so, uh, swiping your ideas. 
Well, that's the beauty of my, my messy writing is it's very hard to read. Mm, there you have it. Johnny, thanks for joining us. And uh, gentlemen, thank Please. you all for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our <clears throat> team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, okay. first of all, I, I just want to say on behalf of myself and all the fans uh, of this feature and, and everything that has come from it since then, thank you all. I, I thank you I thank you guys for your talents. I thank you for your professionalism. And I thank you for the performances or the technical aspects that you brought to this and it's 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 really been fantastic to see this this grow and i hope it continues to grow and just thank you all for being a part of it pleasure thank you for having me. so much fun absolutely absolutely uh i just like to throw this out um for each of you what can you recall might have been the craziest day on the set craziest day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for me it would have been um having to do a fight scene inside a rotating hallway. Oh, I'm so jealous of that. It was, it was, it was, we all got very nauseous. I never thought that I would be made nauseous. I got seasick inside the rotating hallway. Oh my. That was a once in a lifetime experience. Trying to fight, um, trying to fight Corey in there <laughs> was very hard. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think both of us came out really seasick. Mm. If Tiger had a go, <laughs> that I think I had a go in there, but we didn't get to use all the footage. So mm. would have been great to see Peter dancing in there. Oh, it would have been fun. How much were you harnessed for that? All of it? Oh, none, none. It was just stand wow. where wherever it's easy to stand, which is goes from the floor, then onto the wall, then onto the ceiling. Yeah, wow. it was really well done. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. My my wildest time was probably being set on fire, which was fun. Mm. Oh yeah, that that was uh, yeah yeah. I, I, can you go to a little details on that? And uh, Don, if you have any uh, on this as well, yeah. Uh, was, uh, I remember it being very late at night. It was about eleven o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, it was the last thing um, of the day, wasn't it? Yeah, and on in here? that little set of yours, the little um. Uh, the basement. basement set, yeah. Um, I don't think we put did we put we put your ears on, didn't we? Yeah, I had I had hands yeah. as well, but they we couldn't use your original design, could we? Because they would have melted too soon. So we yeah, just, I think know, we had some, some alternative that wouldn't yeah, yeah. melt to my skin in the, in the heat. Yeah, that was a concern. <laughs> there were big so, yeah, hands though. that were covered in a gel, weren't they? And then the yeah. gels yeah. lit, and they were very thick like that. Yeah, yeah every, everything was fun. Well, yeah, we've done. I had full makeup on. Eh? I had I had all the teeth yeah. and everything. But um, yeah, yeah, you well, made you, it five. Yeah, you didn't have the original. Yeah, you had the yeah. uh, stunt stuff on. Yeah, uh, yeah, we yeah it was very safe. It was very closely watched. And I didn't do the full burn, by the way. That credit has to go to an amazing stuntman named Aaron Eastwood. I think that's his name, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Um, yeah. Lovely guy. Yeah, same height and build as me. And he uh, he burned for about 25 seconds, 30 seconds, I think. So he couldn't breathe. So when they um, pulled everything off and when they put him out, because he did the full torch, I only did sort yeah. of three quarters halfway torched. And uh, when they put him out and um, took the blankets off him, uh, he, he, <laughs> and that's how much of a breath of air he took in because he had to hold it for... 30 seconds of thrashing which if you wow. want to try that in under heat and stress um it's almost as bad as being underwater because of the pressure on you so uh you're not just sitting there floating and being tranquil you've got to really yeah it's cool. you out yep. and it's <laughs> exhausting. very dangerous there's actually yeah. a clip online i found a clip uh which is a little documentary piece on youtube i think which um, has you being lit and oh, then the stunt cool. guy doing the full thrashing it's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think that's in the behind the scenes stuff on one of the DVDs as well. It's probably yeah. where I got it. Yeah. Nice. Crazy, craziest day. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, I would do it. Uh, Don, how about your, your side of that? Uh, I think uh, technically every day was pretty crazy yeah. um, with the amount of work that we had. Um, so, and any day Ben was on, um, that was a lengthy makeup. Sure. Um, so, I, We'd start off doing, I'd do Tiger in the morning, 
uh, Danelle would do Jermaine because he had the wig. Um, then Johnny had come in and do Corey. Um, and then when Ben was in, Ben on, was... Johnny would do Corey. Johnny, did you do Corey? Yeah, we were easy. Yeah, we'd do each other. It was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Sorry, John. Layer of dust. And then there was no, Stu, John, and John. Stu was only Stu was maybe a five minute uh, glance over. We didn't enhance his cheeks or anything. They were, they were all until his. he got werewolfed. Mm. Until he got werewolfed. Yeah. Um, but the vampires were on most, pretty much every day, of the yeah. shoot. Um, so chasing vampires around Wellington um, was all pretty crazy and amusing. Uh, how long was Ben in the makeup chair for to put on, and how long to take off? Uh, it's about two and a half hours um, to get on, and maybe forty-five to get him out and get him clean, okay. ready for home time. Yeah, yeah. That's that's actually that's actually ahead of the curve uh, for taking off time. So. It's yeah, yeah. It would. Yeah. We didn't. We didn't have because the the shooting day was so long. I would. It would be um getting a shower, take everything off as much as we could, eh, Don? And there would still be bits I'd be pulling off at home later. There was no yeah. time for. Now sit back in the makeup chair. And we'll we'll put a cloth over your face and we'll let you uh, um exfoliate for a while. And I was yeah. like, ben, get in the chair. I've got five other people to do. Yeah. So Don, Don looked after me as much as he could. Um, yeah, that that, that drive that drive home and you're yeah yeah <laughs> been there done that. Oh. I had oh. I had a person who was in charge of my boots. <laughs> That's right. So Special I could boots. sit in a chair made up, the teeth go in, and just sit there, and someone would do the laces on my boots, mm. which was a nice little timeout moment. <laughs> Yeah, you know, some sometimes uh, an actor's life can be luxurious. Yeah, that was it. See, I was that need that. Right I need back in my life now. <laughs> the boot person. Who's my who's my who's my booter? <laughs> well, Johnny, I'll do your boots right now. Hang on. <laughs> I'm trying to find this link for everybody, but I'm. I'll Wait, those are just trying. shoelaces, Johnny. Those are just shoelaces. I'm not. Not oh, is that what you're doing? Just kidding. <laughs> he's not. He's not even wearing it. He's not even wearing it. I shoes. wasn't even aware that you were doing my boots. Sorry, Ben. I was very discreet. Later. later, please. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we had that. <laughs> That's impressive. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, we're going to go on our audience questions. So, uh, Johnny, if you do find that link, uh, put it in our private chat here, and our producer can yeah. put it up. And let's go ahead and roll our first question from our audience. And this comes from Lynn, and they want to know, what is your favorite horror movie or horror-based TV show? Oh. Who's going first? Lock and Key has been one that comes to mind recently on Netflix. Really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, but Castle Rock, I think, tops my um, recent favorites. Oh, Black Summer. Zombie um, apocalypse TV show. Really love Black Summer. We just did an event with that cast last week, and they were delightful. Right. And you're right. It, it's, a great, it's a great slow burn uh, yeah. zombie show, so I really appreciate yeah, it. So that's three, you guys. Come on. That's three. Yeah. Hey, you know. Um, uh, I have to say I'm not really a horror fan. I, uh, okay, my turn. Yeah. <laughs> TV show. Um, uh, I've, I've been I've just binged the entire um, Seinfeld series on Netflix. That's pretty scary. Um, just to look at how they write, how they do comedy, and how they structure their episodes. Yeah, and I learned a lot, and I really enjoyed it. It's very simple stuff. I love the comedies and the little things. Mm. Um, yeah. And for me, horror, I um, I spend I kind of find myself walking away and coming back and missing parts, and I wonder that I don't seem to be able to get into the storyline so much but if i had to choose a horror movie i think the one that affected me the most um was the exorcism of emily rose and the performance oh. that the woman that the um the actress did was pretty amazing well yeah seen it. yeah i can totally see that there you go and don what you got uh, i find myself watching less and less horror movies but um i grew up watching a lot of them so I I guess the thing, uh, John Carpenter's movies, I would say, yeah. are some of the favourites. 
and what we do in the shadows. Which I yeah. I there you would go. be a favorite as we were making it. As uh um was the thing uh something that got you interested in the uh, in the makeup effects? Uh did did but was Batine your spirit spirit guide? It was a bit of a spirit guide. Um yeah all that stuff like Ghostbusters and Gremlins, I thought was amazing when I was a kid. I just couldn't, and trying to work out how, you know, I remember my mom saying they're puppets, and I was just like, no, they're, they're not. <laughs> they're puppets of Hermit and Miss Piggy. But these things were, I really intrigued me. Yeah. Jacob's That's... Ladder comes to mind too. Yeah, oh, good one. Thank you, Jacob's Ladder. Very good one. And there you go, Lynn. Thank you. Great question to start us off with. What is next? Oh. Here's one from Christy. Wants to know, oh, <laughs> what other fandom would you like to see have a crossover with what we do in the shadows? Crap. So you're, you're, oh. you're, you're a type of va uh, your vampire horror world combined with anything well, from Shakespeare I, um, to the Marvel Universe. I it's wanted to be do Simon Pegg and Matt Frost, I'd say, and Ooh. Edgar Wright. Just getting in there with their zombie apocalypse world would be a wonderful mashup. Sorry, Johnny. I, I no, that's on. a good one. I like that yeah. one. Yeah, it's nice. Um, I wanted to do. I still want to do a Deacon spinoff, um, where he and this is this is probably a mashup with Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, but Deacon goes off. He discovers that his long lost ex girlfriend has come back from the dead or has reincarnated as a feminist, militant feminist performance artist. Um, he's running a, a performance art dive in the Ukraine. And so he, he, the only way he can go and get her back is to travel there and get stuck into performance art. And he takes, he takes Nick the vampire with him. So it's two, two guys who hate each other trying to get Deacon, his girlfriend, back. Um, and it goes badly. <laughs> There you go. There so, you go. Mesh up? Maybe not, but yeah, I can see it. Um, I guess like uh, maybe a uh, Doctor Who, maybe like an old Ooh. old if Tom Baker yeah. turned up in Shadows or Wellington Paranormal. Like that would be an interesting um, mesh up. <laughs> alien, I... alien vampires. <laughs> I could, I could just see um, Doctor Who offering Vlad um, a jelly baby and Vlad mm. going, <laughs> You say you have two hearts? You must have lots of blood. <laughs> I want the jelly baby, please. Uh, I can see that because, yeah, the Baker years had some pretty uh, horror fang rock. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, do, I, I do Doctor Who panels a lot. I've always said there's mm -hmm. a good history of horror in that too as well as the humor so yes totally yeah. see that and for my own two cents uh just because i i love mockumentary so much i'd love to see your characters in spinal tap do a crossover yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that would be awesome <laughs> that would be, I'd be that yeah. <laughs> christy thank you great one and what do we have next here's one from brian ah uh, do, you, do you do you guys have a favorite scene in the film Well, the erotic dancing for me um, is one of my faves, just because um, it's the only time I've ever danced in my life, and I loved it. I should do it again one day. <laughs> I don't know why I don't dance more often. <laughs> I'm trying um, to think. Uh, for me, for me, I think it's, there's a, a scene which I'm not sure if it made the cut, but it was um, it was Viago and Deacon sitting sitting there making clay pottery together. And Viago is talking about the the, um, the woman in his life who's now 93 and lives in a retirement village and he really misses her and would really love to go and bite her. And there's this lovely talk about love. And Deacon just says, do you do you want to be with her? And he goes, yeah, I think I do. Shall I go and bite her? And they go, yeah, you should. You should totally bite her. And he goes, yeah, but she's 93. <laughs> she does. <laughs> I think it's in the um, outtakes, though, that scene. Okay. Yeah, I think it must be. Uh, I think my favourite scene, the first one that comes to mind, I think, is um, is Deacon and Nick on the hilltop uh, having a <laughs> yeah, moment in the moonlight where everything's at its lowest ebb. 
Yeah. And then you give them a give them a little pep talk. Love that scene. Quite poignant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carries the heart of the film in some ways. Uh, I'd, favorite scene. I like the I like the first appearance of Johnny's um, Deacon's jumper. Um, his knitted number with the the sunrise. Um, but yeah. also like the the you know the scene with with Taika and and Ben, the first interaction between them, um, oh, yeah. and Peter's explosion, um, and um, <laughs> Ben uses you know real sense of tension, and the chase scene as well, yeah. where um, uh, Jermaine appears as the cat. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Because it's a real change of tempo, and it's genuinely quite. Um, Deacon in the, in the bag. Brilliant. Yeah, in the bag. Yes. Yeah. So that scene, just for the just for um background, the, the, the studio we had uh, had a lot of these fake walls that we'd move around to make different rooms and the doors would go from what the hallway into a room, which would only maybe only be half a room. Um and we we would appear in the camera to scare Nick. He would run down the hallway, then we'd run through the door. And then appeared through another door and try and time it and so it was a lot of those a lot of that appearing out of nowhere was us just sprinting from door to door hoping to get there in time that's yeah a lot of a lot of those effects were just us running about which was a lot of fun that's that's not too far from an actual old school fun house where you'd yeah. have about three actors and they would run around and they'd be like nine different jumping out at people when they got in there so nice. yeah. yeah there you go there you go for for my two cents um i just love the reconciliation at the end when the werewolves cautiously come out of hey what's up and uh, all right hey how you doing it's just that 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 uncomfortableness but oh hey our friend is back and yeah it was just yeah, it was just, yeah. it's really nice. it's, it's the heart it's heart of the it's film still small, but it's okay exactly <laughs> <laughs> the um again on that just how we shot that um I remember sitting in the kitchen and Jermaine pokes his head and says, so there's going to be a knock at the door. If someone knocks at the door, just go and answer it. And I think the first take was I, he hadn't said answer it. So I was sitting there listening, wondering who's going to walk in and no one walked in sitting there knitting. And then Jermaine comes running and said, just, yes, I answer the door. If someone does knock, and, oh, okay. Yeah, I, answer, <laughs> sorry. I thought I was just going to sit there. So I walked down the hall, cameras following me, open the door. And there's, um, there's, uh, Reese Darby was the one I remember the take where he's there going, oh, g'day. And I just closed the door on him and walked back to the kitchen and sat back down. And cut. <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, so, so invite him in. So, you know. But the idea was <laughs> that he would get, they had all that options. They had the option of Deacon not yeah. giving, not answering the door, then of Deacon closing the door on the werewolves. Mm -hmm. And then those are all options to play that they could potentially use in the edit. Yeah. And that's the way they shot it was just, see what happens and let the actors do what they want first and then and then bring the actual story in later and then get the scene that's right. in the script after they've done all that so sure sure mm. there you go great brian great question thank you and what we have next here's one from kelly if you had the powers of a vampire what would you like to use them for <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And uh, we'll say if you have the powers, then you also have the weaknesses. Oh, nice, nice. What are the weaknesses? Yeah. Oh, you can't eat. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, have a chip. <laughs> chips, yeah. There's a whole world of fetishism Things and kink suck. that you could get into as a vampire, I'm sure, which is really well touched on in the in the film. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Oh. Ben, <laughs> sorry. Um, hey, let's normalize these things. Maybe um, flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's yeah, normalize yeah. swearing for kids. <laughs> let's romanticize swearing for children. <laughs> um, flying. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Definitely. Being yeah, able to stay up all night. Be great. Not that attractive, as the film points out. Sort of, sort of flying, floating. It's, it's. Yeah, I never got the idea you guys could like fly like Superman. I got the idea you guys could sort of hover and then sort of glide. 
Yeah, it's pretty shit ass. It's very blurry what we can yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't go out in the sun. Yeah, tell Ben tell Ben all about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No clue. Uh Don, how about he, you if you had the vampire? He actually life? sunbathes all day. He's actually got specialist sunbathing trunks. Tiny little right. basically little pouch that he sunbathes in. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Don, carry on. Oh hey. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that's actually that's actually for my Seriously. microphone. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think yeah, I think flying, like Johnny said. I think yeah. travel. If you could do long distance, maybe you could travel and be back before dinner. Yeah. Well, the nice thing Why is, you not the most smoking bars, though, could you? Not as much. Why do we turn into bats if we can just fly? If we can float places? <clears throat> Would we be an endangered species, though? Lots of bats are endangered species. Yeah. That's true. Mm. And the nice thing about travel is that you don't have to book yourself a ticket. You could just have yourself shipped as freight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah see, that's problematic. You see, because you've got to lie in a you've got to lie in a ton of of your own earth from your own backyard. You got to so that's not going to be nice. And then when you get to the port, they're going to put you on the on the dock, and who knows who's going to open you up during the yeah. middle of the Clifford day. Dogs. Sniffer dogs. Sniffer dogs, Sniffer. yeah. Nightmare. And right now, at least over the United States, there's a backlog in our, 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 our shipping disbursements. <laughs> so, they, you know, they're Bad like, time for vampires. We'd have to be killing all the TSA agents as they came through to um, inspect the coffins. So, yeah. Can't just do yeah, it like the inspectors. <laughs> <laughs> you have not seen anything. And again, they're not concerned about the person in there. They're just wondering uh, have the taxes been and, and been paid on this. <laughs> and there you go, Kelly. Fun question. What do we have oh, next? I think I think your answer, Patty, about um, being able to hypnotize hypnotize people is probably my second favorite. I think that'd be great. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get to keep any items? Oh yes. Have you have you uh, got a key? Yeah. Any items, costumes from the film? Yeah. I have. I've I, got didn't, I didn't get to keep um, my beautiful jacket that was made that was that was made for me. I didn't get to keep that, but I did steal the bison jacket. I stole the jewelry. Uh, sorry, Don. I stole the teeth. <laughs> and I probably haven't told you that, uh, Saz. Um, yeah. Also, I stole the teeth from the um, the American series that was shot in Toronto, because those teeth are great mm. you guys make great vampire teeth once they're in they're really hard to get out and i did do a convention yeah. once um with the with the teeth that we used on and one of the teeth mm. fell out and i it was mm. I, I was chatting away and one of the teeth was i was trying to put it back in while talking without moving my <laughs> without yeah. moving. you did it though worked those those yeah. Those molded ones, they're nice and they'll kind of last for life. What do we have? Uh, we've had Star Trek actors on before that have played aliens. They've said, Yeah, the headpiece deteriorated, but I still have my Ferengi teeth. <laughs> you know, I'll pop it in. So. I've still got all the yeah. broken teeth. I've got Jermaine and Tucker's, and your, I've got a set of your broken ones. Oh, there yeah. you go. Broken teeth. Two sets of mine. Teeth. Jermaine used to put his in his pocket. Tucker was fond of doing that as well. They preserve them, make sure they didn't break. They had pockets. Yeah. They had pockets. <laughs> Did you not have any pockets? No, I had no pockets. <laughs> I just left them in. Well, that, that's the kind of, that's a costuming issue. That's not done, story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah. It's fine. I didn't get to keep the fishnet singlet, so uh, my friend oh, is a yeah. secondhand fashionista found one and gave it to me so i now i have a fishnet singlet oh nice lovely what color white also oh. a dark blue one i have two i remember trying to find one when we were in the states do you remember that we were trying to find a fishnet singlet for you yeah yeah and we all we could find was a pink one we thought oh maybe it's yeah. good different yes. genre yeah could we dive yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, maybe uh ben did you uh do we hear from you yet got it um uh, no i've my teeth that's the only the thing teeth, I the teeth is now in a museum in oh, well, there you go. 
Yeah, with um, all the other characters' main costumes as well. So okay. we're all on a display in a in a um, little museum in Wellington, which is cool. Right on. So yes, couldn't keep anything. Couldn't even keep my hair, which uh, I had to shave off. Got to keep my eyebrows. <laughs> Get your eyebrows. Yeah. yeah. Did you lose them? Did you have no eyebrows? In no, no, J J um, no. Taika was cheeky enough to ask. He said, uh, "Would you be?" Wanting to shave off your own yeah. And I said, no, no, thanks. I'd rather keep those unless it's absolutely necessary. And Dom was going, no, no, we can manage with eyebrows. But it's good if you can shave your hair off. And that I did. I think I've only worn a, um, a bald wig, bald cap once, I think. for Yeah, you had, yeah you had a bald cap. I think it's <clears throat> so I have uh, in the photos, I think, for some stills where you're sitting on I think Johnny's sitting on your lap, maybe. I think oh, you've yeah. got a ball cap on there. Yeah, I think that was during be. the pickups. Okay. During yeah. the pickups were shot on Peter's scene. A year later. So it was a year in between the main shoot when we all came back. Wow. Yeah, a year wow. later. And let's roll another one. And this comes from Rilta? Uh, was there much <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell this again. Is, is it a capital I or, or an L? I can't figure those out. Or I'll, 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 let's say Rita. Um, was there much improv done on the set? Well, that was yes. kind of the crux of the film. Yeah. 100%. So um, the frustration for me was uh, never, never being allowed to see a script. In fact, everyone was, everyone was instructed to keep Johnny away from any, any content whatsoever. And, in every single scene, I would be I would be made up. The only thing I knew was if they put a harness on me. Like, okay, so today we, we're flying. That was the only thing. Otherwise, it was um, okay. Let's. Jermaine would say, okay, so um, the cameras are going to start rolling, and so we're just going to be sitting in here. Okay, so I'm going to sit here, and the cameras start rolling, and one of the boys would start talking, and I would just listen, or I would pitch in. If you look at the film again, you notice you can. There's a lot of scenes where I'm sitting there, listening hard, wondering what the hell's going on, while Taika and Jermaine do the lines that they had written over seven years of writing the script, <laughs> with all their gags. I had none, so I'm sitting there. You can tell I'm sort of sitting there listening, going, "What are we talking about? Oh, you were talking about this. Okay, cool. Cut. Move on. Oh, great." So. Uh for most of your stuff, it was just pretty much all reaction. Was there ever a says, okay, we need the scene to end on this? Because yeah. I know that Christopher well, Guest tends to work like that, where he's like, yeah. uh, we need this is the plot point we're going for. So go. Yeah, so so that would be the last take that we would do, would be to complete the plot point in the script. Okay. But the, the other previous nine takes would all be improvisation towards that moment. Um, the, the, the erotic dance scene... As, a, as an actor is told, come to Wellington, do the film, bring the, your favorite character, make your favorite character, invent your favorite character's costume and pastimes and hobbies. And so for me, it was knitting and erotic dance. And so on. A, so today, today's I walk on set. In this scene, Johnny, we're sitting watching TV while Nick comes in the window. And so um, what should we do? And I mean, um, have you got anything in the script you want to do? Yeah, but it's boring. It's us watching TV. And, oh, okay. Shall I do an erotic dance? Yeah. Well, that's a great idea. Let's do an erotic dance. Tyker, John's going to do an erotic dance. Yeah, great. Let's do it. So I had about 40 minutes to go and find the fishnet singlet, which was brilliant. We had that for some – incredibly, we had a fishnet singlet because that's the first thought I had. And then it was um, – I'd watched a bit of Metropolis, so I knew I was going to try to homage some of the – erotic dance moves there and it was basically just action start dancing and don't stop and be and do some erotic dance don't stop that's the that's the one thing don't stop dancing if you get if you feel lost keep going kudos for remembering that there's more to metropolis than just the robot scenes there's another three and a half <laughs> hours to that film where there's other stuff going on yeah the best stuff's all the erotic dance stuff that's so good awkward <laughs> macabre erotic dance Hang on, parental advisory, right? Yeah, easy there. Uh, there you go. Uh, ben, yeah. uh, did you? Uh, yeah. uh, was there any 
think they just wound you up and said, uh, "All right, we're gonna op- we're gonna open, <laughs> we're gonna start rolling and can do something." Um, Taika interviewed me at one point. <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, I sat in the kitchen um, where the dishes were never done, and there was an impromptu interview. So um, Taika, the director, not Viago, um, came down and sat with me in the chair and said. Well, this is uh, Peter, and um, yeah, he started asking me asking me a few general questions about how long I'd been a vampire and um, what did I think about uh, the other members of the flat. I, I can't even remember what the questions were, but trying to remain Peter and not talk, but still talk with teeth. And I'd given myself a Polish accent and tried to speak a few Polish things. And I remember him asking me something really offensive. And so I swore at him in Polish. Um, and I know he didn't know what it meant. But um, yes, it just made Peter very cantankerous. But that's the only time Peter has actually spoken, apart from at conventions where it's a bit of a necessity. <laughs> well, side was- note, side note to yeah. that, um, none of us have Russian accents, world. There are no Russian accents in the film. Or maybe the beast has a Russian accent, but I don't think she's Russian. I think the beast is also, or maybe she is, but but my accent is Romanian. Yeah, I I think uh, yours is Polish. Yeah, Yeah, I made Peter because he's he's older and from um, Poland originally um, was bigger than Russia back in the day. And eventually Russia took everything over and made their expense. greater than anything so poland has shrunk but they were a superpower um, a few hundred years ago what was the uh, polish uh, swear um popier do liwoce, which means uh, can i say it are you sure. in the head <laughs> <laughs> are you in the head so yes that was fun very hard to roll the r popierdo, popierdo, uh, with a mouthful of fangs Obviously, and Don. Um, again, with this with this style of improv filmmaking, uh, was there a choice that any of the characters uh, made at a certain point that, and when it was done, they had to go back to the makeup chair uh, for a reset? Oh, uh, uh, keeping Ben's keeping uh, Peter's fingers intact yeah. was a challenge. Fingernails so come off. The, yeah, um, and impromptu toilet breaks oh, have well. to come off and then back on there you go. Um, uh, just maintaining the the pale vampire looks after you know J- johnny had the the bison jacket which was very hot mm. um jason hoyt had a really heavy costume with the masquerade ball um for julian um so keeping the you know keeping the makeup from sweating off Sure. Um, so, so the usual, the usual upkeep. Yeah. Yeah. Was it like somebody just twitter was blah, and then all of a sudden an ear came off or anything like that? Okay. All right. That's Don, good. I've got a question for you, Dom. Just quickly, yeah. how many makeups yeah. did you have to do on any given night for the ball scene? Mm. And what was the maximum you did in one night for that scene? Uh, not sh- there was. I was just, I was doing Johnny, Tyker, Jason. Danelle was on Jermaine, and then we got a, a bunch of um, extra help on that night because it was so big. Yeah. Um, I think we shot yeah we shot it over one night, um, but there was there was over a hundred people there that day. How many artists did you get to get processed? Ten? I think there was about ten. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very small amount for that many people in full yeah. makeup. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just lived, I mean, we limited the, I mean, it, in in our imagination, it could have been um, a lot more extravagant and a lot more, um, you know, creatures similar to Peter, um, but it was just uh, we're unable to do that on the time yeah. schedule and budget, but um, yeah. There you go. 
There you go, Rita. Thank you. Great question. I think we have time for one more. Let's see if we can go on a really fun one. And this comes from Jimmy P, which is each of your, what are your favorite Halloween candies or candies in general? I'm really boring. Uh, I don't eat jerky. <laughs> Oh, is that, a, is, that a, is that a New Zealand thing? How interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, I would call it Zoe Vors. We used to have a thing called a fizzy pop, which was a lollipop with sherbet inside it, and they, the sides of the fizzy pop had little channels to the outside. They were outrageous. I, uh, I, don't, I don't think we've, we haven't had a version of like that, as far as I know, over here. That's wow. It disappeared. Know. It's a tragedy. Sounds good. Cool. I remember we used to get, uh, I don't know if you can get them anymore, but fizz dips. Um, it came with a, like a, a, a chalky kind of spoon that you dip in. And the bag of, the bag you, of I mean, you, you get it at the, at the swimming pool. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it was like a candy stick you'd uh, put. Yeah, we call yeah, that uh, like a, a, fun, a fun dips, we would call it. You, fun you would dip, like yeah. Yeah, it was like a it was almost like a belt of uh, you kept two of the sticks, and it was like a right. utility belt of different flavors right, that right. you could dip it into. And then there would yeah, be one kid who would just eat the stick and then have to like, you know, yeah, 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 like eating a packet of jelly crystals. Yeah, so something like that. Right for parents. <laughs> there you go, gentlemen. It's an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? Thank you for having me. Um, yes, thanks. Yeah, thanks. thanks for coming. Come and chat. Thanks to GalaxyCon. Thank you. Yeah. Gentlemen, yeah. it's been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us. Thank you for your great questions. Thank Hope you. to see you all again soon. Have a happy and safe Halloween. And remember, smiles are free. Spend them often. And we're going to close out on the clip Johnny was talking about earlier. Thank you, Patty. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Paul. Yep. I'm going to make sure those hands are really dripping and the head's really dripping. Okay. Are we ready? That's right. I was very thin then because I had been injured in the toilet. Oh, wow. That's so amazing, oh, eh? Green, come on over here. Blue. This, this is, is my first ever test. time being on fire. Blue. Wow. Lighting up. I was being super careful. Did you, did you walk inside yeah, after, there, after being, it was a practice? Yeah, this practice. was just okay. first rehearsal. Yeah. So you've given me a good briefing you on what breathing. to do and how to do. You're getting burnt? How's it feeling? It's good. Wow. So uh, yeah, I kept it very limited okay. because I wasn't good. sure how what okay. my limits were. Okay. And that should be enough. Fascinating. Time. Like I could have done a heap more. I wish I could have had another go. Yeah. Um, so again, time and money. Still, to your credit, you were on fire. Yes, um, I'm glad that I got lit up a lot more um, in the end than that rehearsal was. I think yeah. also Rodney Cook, great stunt coordinator, yeah, wanted to test whether or not I would freak out because a lot of actors go, yeah, 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 I'm fine, I can do that. And then they do it and they go. Bah, 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 bah. So that was sort of a psychological test as well to see whether or not I would freak out like I said I wouldn't. It is scary. And I didn't. Yeah. Yeah, so he makes it scary because it's dangerous. Oh. And so they don't want you to relax and think, oh, everything's fine. Ah, ow, ow, I've got third degree burns, you know. So, yeah. Cosplayers, please keep that in mind that uh, makeup effects are good, flaming, not so much. <laughs> and with that, bye bye, everyone. Take care. Happy Halloween.